Well, our very special guest, our first guest uh, on the take is the one and only Tom Hiddleston, one of the stars of The Essex Serpent. We'll have a chat with Tom after you've heard a clip from the TV show. I'll come back with some tools. What are you hoping to find? A tangible link to our past. To the creatures that came before us. To what you think is out there. Maybe. But how can a dead fossil prove the existence of a living one? It can't. But it might give us hints, clues. You really believe that? I think I believe. I'm never sure of the difference between thinking and believing. Perhaps one day you can teach me. Anyway, um, so that's a clip from the Essex Serpent new TV show, Apple TV Plus. Uh, Tom Hiddleston joins us from a palatial uh, bedroom or office or hotel suite. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello, both. Thank you so much for having me. What an honour to be the first guest on the take. Um, I'm so I feel very um, humble and privileged. Well, thank you. Well, thank Thanks you. That me. was fantastic opening to the interview. I have to say, uh, the last time you were on the show, um, we was looking at photographs of this just this morning. Um, you were playing your guitar. That was I saw the light. We played music together. We did I played in a pre-pandemic world? We all played music together. That's right. Yeah. We stood in the same room um, and played instruments in the same room, which was a kind of joy. You played it extremely well. I mean, I know you play all the time. And I was thinking about accents because, uh, to my English ears, your American accent as Hank Williams was fantastic. And in the Essex Serpent, Claire Danes, I haven't heard her do an English accent before, but it's note perfect, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. I mean, it, she is really astonishing. She had this ability to jump, also enviable, to jump in and out of the accent. So there's no sort of staying in the accent all day. You know, she's Claire Danes, you know, New York born and raised when she's talking about lunch and um, how windy it is on the Essex coast. And then she's Cora Seaborn and she's magically a uh, late 19th century widow from London. Yes. So, so take us, so the year is 1893, I think. Take us into the world of the Essex Serpent and introduce us to uh, your priest, Will Ransom, who you play in the show. Yes, the year is 1893 and we are on a stretch of the easternmost east coast of England in Essex. A teenage girl has gone missing. Something is bumping into the fishing boats. Recently, there has been an earthquake which has dislodged all kinds of fossils in the soil. Charles Darwin has recently published The Origin of the Species, The Natural Order, and Our Means of Explaining the Experience of Being Alive is Changing, The Power of Reason is Growing, The Power of re Organized Religion is Possibly Dwindling. And perhaps this earthquake has also, alongside these fossils, has dislodged a winged beast beneath the surface of the Blackwater estuary, a figure from folklore, the Essex serpent, come to steal your children and haunt your dreams. Cora Seaborn, played by Claire Danes, is a, um, a wealthy widow from London who has an interest in the natural sciences. And in her newfound release from her marriage, finds herself on the Essex coast in search of answers and chasing her curiosity and she encounters the local vicar, a very uh, rational man who's also probably read Darwin and Lyle, but is trying to contain the anxieties of his parishioners who um, are a very God-fearing community and believe or are starting to worry that the serpent has returned. So he, Will Ransom, is who I play this vicar, and he's trying to quell the, the fear of... Um, of the community and Cora has come with all her curiosity to provoke more questions yeah. than answers, shall we say, there, thereby. So what tail. is, just tell us more about Will Ransom, your priest. Uh, you must have been intrigued by the characters from Sarah Perry's novel, a very successful novel at the Essex. Mm. What's he doing in this village called Old Winter? What is, because he is a very learned man, Maybe we feel yes. he's a bit out of place there anyway. Tell us about Will. Well, there's a lovely passage in Sarah Perry's 
uh, novel, which I think is really, the novel itself is very evocative and I found very moving. And there's a great insight into him where Will and Cora just seem to disagree about lots of things. They disagree about the sort of the fundamentals of life, but they are, a spark is ignited between them, which is one of intellectual curiosity and companionship. And there's a bit where they're walking along, Will is showing Cora the, the, um, the sites where she can dig. And she's saying, what are you doing out here on the Essex coast? You know, what's a man like you doing all the way out here? And he says, well, I, you know, they're friends of mine or people in my parents and my family thought I should, you know, be go into politics or go into the law. And perhaps I should be uh, negotiating some minor point from the back benches. But, but I didn't want that. What I wanted was purpose, not achievement. I'd rather be uh, guiding an atheist back to the God who never left him. And I have an equal in my wife, Stella. And I love that the idea of um, this quite educated man seeming to prefer or be called to what seems on the surface to be a simpler life, but is perhaps a, a deeper life, a life that's more engaged with the soul, more engaged with nature and um Clio Barnard, whom I know you both know well and know her work, she she sort of directed me towards the poetry of William Blake, that, that Will's conception of God sort of resides in the majesty of the natural world, and he loves being in it. I, I confess, we shot a lot of it on the Essex coast, amazing locations I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say I had never visited before. Um, uh, a very ancient wild place and it is a kind of wilderness the old the old marshlands it's so tidal and so wet uh, that it looks very much the same as it ever as ever did can you tell us something about working with uh, Clio because obviously Clio Barnard has directed The Arbor The Selfish Giant which was a huge hit Dark River and Ali and Ava is just out in cinemas at the moment and is doing wonderfully That's right. it's such a terrific film and it must have been a very different experience for her to go from Ali and Ava, which is a very low budget movie, which she was making, you know, mm. in very familiar territory, to doing something like Essex Serpent. What was it like to work with her on this? I loved working with Clio. And I met her for the first time many years ago. I think actually a decade ago, we both had, I was in a film of Joanna Hoggs that was screening at the London Film Festival. And um, she also had a film there. But I remember that we both remember that meeting very fondly. And um, she sent me an extraordinary letter about the project when the script arrived. And I'd always been curious about her process. Her reputation speaks for itself uh, as a director of actors too. She's incredibly open and kind and careful I don't. I can't imagine that her process with us was any different to her process on any of her own features, which was to really to to really dig deep into investigating the human dynamics and the complexity of these relationships. That these there are very very complex feelings, deep soulful human feelings contained in the story, and she wanted to to allow all those complexities to emerge in the most organic way. And I found collaborating with her was really enjoyable. And also very tall. Yes, <laughs> very tall. <laughs> Indeed, I could always spot her in, um, she was always silhouetted <laughs> against the grey sky. Uh, on the issue of the, of the serpent, as I understand it, this mm. is not a myth which was created by Sarah Perry for the book. This is a story that was around and she's just used this story to make the tale. Is that right? Yes, I believe actually she and her husband were driving back from somewhere one day. She's from Essex. And her husband said, oh, this is, you know, this is where they saw the serpent. And, it, and she said, excuse me, what? And she said, yeah, you know, the Essex serpent. It's like the Loch Ness Monster. It's supposed to hang around in the estuary. And, and she said the whole story came to her in a flash of inspiration. And she sort of worked out the plot by the time they got home 40 minutes later in a sort of, you know, skeleton way. And... It, this, I think this idea of we're always compelled by what we can't see or what we don't fully understand, especially if we sense that something is out there. And there's something about water. You know, great stories are always, we don't fully understand water, the ocean, the sea. I personally find it very compelling. I'm, very, I'm always drawn to it. 
because it's not our territory as human beings. And yet we're aware of powerful forces beneath the surface, which may have answers for us. But that sense of not understanding water also taps into the religion element, because one of the things that happens in one of the first couple of episodes is somebody immediately imagines that if the serpent has come back and taken a child, that it's because of their sin, Mm. that somehow this is sinful retribution. And there is a sense that they're living in a kind of netherworld between this world and the next. Quite right. And I think a a serpent has always been a symbol of, you know, we talked a lot, or Sarah talked a lot about the story as an excavation of faith as much as anything, that actually both reason and any religious or spiritual um, vocation require a leap of the imagination or a similar leap of faith. But that if you start to investigate any conception of morality, be it a, a theistic or atheistic, serpents are these morally ambivalent creatures and it and it's not an accident that in the uh, in eden um, and sarah is very aware of this in 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 the biblical tale it is the serpent that tempts eve a serpent as a as an incarnation somehow of of the devil it's interesting that you should major on that obviously because you're uh, because it's about the serpent and you are a priest but there are so many big ideas in this series it you know the faith and science which we heard a kind of refer you know reference to in the in the clip at the beginning socialism inequality feminism mm. is all it's all mm. part it's all part in, of the swamp lands that you're that you're living in isn't it tom I mean, obviously, none of <laughs> three of us weren't there, but my understanding is that the late nineteenth century was a very turbulent time of very, very fast and of upheaval and change. The world was changing very quickly, and methods of communication were changing quickly, and also our means of understanding our lives were changing very fast. And I think it, that's why it resonates with our age now is our world seems to be changing extremely fast and sometimes faster than our minds can keep up with the way we communicate, the way we root ourselves or, or, or find a route that can supply or, or yield meaning for us. I think all of that is, is really present and vital in our story. It's, there are all these characters who, are, who maybe th- arrive at the beginning of the story and they think they know who they are. They think they have certainties they can cling on to. But there's a turbulence in the story and everybody's certainties are challenged and questioned. And uh, the world is changing and things are going to be very different. And and, and particularly, it's, it is worth saying, in um, the, these extraordinary women that's, that Sarah Perry has created. The great thing about our new format is that Obviously, everyone just wants to spend as much time with Tom Hiddleston as they possibly can. I certainly do. Yes, and so so that's <laughs> the end, so basically that's the end of part one of our conversation. But the great thing is, in take two for super subscribers, top notch subscribers, they get more with more, Tom, more Tom, even more, more Tom. Tom, and more Tom is what the country needs. I, I think the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. But for now, okay. for now, Tom Hiddleston, uh, one of the stars of the Essex Serpent, Apple TV Plus uh, new series. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. So- 